Hi, I'm Alex Barlow, senior at Preston High, and I play right midfield. I, my favorite memory of playing soccer was my junior year against Elkins. We were down one nothing. We came back, finished the game up four two. I'd like to thank my mom, dad, coaches, and all my teammates for supporting me through my high school career, and also like to thank my grandma and my grandpa for everything they've done for me. Mill Chapel United Brethren in Christ invites you out to Sunday Worship, Children's Church at 8.30 on Sunday morning, Sunday School at 9.45, Worship Services at 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Mill Chapel has small groups and Bible studies for men, women, and youth. And Mill Chapel is proud to announce they've partnered with the Red Cross and is a Preston County Disaster Relief Center, supported by a large generator system that allows the church to be fully functional in times of power outages. Mill Chapel United Brethren on the Kingwood Pike, Reedsville. Something new at Peasley's Service Center. Well, first of all, they've got thousands of new tires, any kind of tire for any kind of car or truck at Peasley's. And a great price on those tires, so make sure you have good, fresh tires to finish the winter. Now, they also have a new alignment machine. It's by Hunter. It is state-of-the-art, and it's big enough to align your crew cab, long bed truck, your dually, your truck up to a 550 size, even oversized tires. Tires are now the best alignment around at Peasley's. Quality feed from Hubbard and Showright Feed. That's what you'll find at Child's Feed and Supply. But Child's Feed and Supply is more than just feed, lots more. You'll find the tough steel trimmers and chainsaws, DR Power Equipment, Snapper and Snapper Pro Lawn and Garden Equipment, Generators by Briggs & Stratton, and, of course, Child's Services, what they sell. Plus, it's time to stock up on wood pellets for the winter. Child's has them. Child's Feed and Supply, more than just feed. Second light either way along Route 7 in Kingwood. Childs. Good luck to the Preston High Knights soccer team. Tyler Davis, mom and dad say go get them. And folks, while you're traveling to and from the soccer games, be sure to stop by Becky's Restaurant, Route 26, south of Kingwood. They're right beside the Heldreth Motel. Let's go Knights from Becky's Restaurant. Hello, this is Aaliyah from Spike's Chimney Sweep. As we are enjoying the heat from the summer sun, we have to remember Old Man Winter will be here knocking on our door soon. Now's the time to start thinking of your heating needs. Here at Spikes, we have you covered with a variety of heating products. We carry wood, coal, pellet, and gas. Give us a call at 304-864-3435 or stop by and get prepared for winter now. We strive to keep you warm inside while old man winter blows outside. Choose the right path for your real estate needs. Locally owned Mountain Path Properties, LLC in Arthurdale. We provide full real estate services to all of North Central West Virginia. Our professional realtors are equipped to provide clients with the highest standard of service in the industry, and we value the opportunity to assist our neighbors and friends in buying, selling, leasing, or managing all types of property. Mountain Path Properties will even represent the buyer at no cost in any transaction no matter which real estate company the property is listed with. So, don't just call a number on a sign. Call Mountain Path Properties and get a professional realtor that will work for you. Oh, and if you're thinking of selling your home, call us for a free market analysis to help determine the value of your property today. Whether your little one has an earache or you simply have a sinus infection, it's urgent that you get the care you need fast. That's why they call them urgent care facilities and not drive 45 minutes to an out-of-area hospital facilities. Fortunately, Preston Memorial Hospital now has an urgent care facility that's open seven days a week, so all Preston residents can get the immediate attention they need and get better as quickly as possible. Preston Memorial Hospital Urgent Care at the Route 7 Kingwood Pike intersection. What? what? What do you think you're doing now? I'm going to play soccer. With who? With them. Hi, guys. But you need to put my winter treads on, change my brakes, and change my oil. We have to get to the Preston High soccer game tonight. Rainbow Tire, the tire lady takes care of me. Hi, I'm Kieran Dam. I'm a senior at Preston High. I play forward. I've been playing soccer for about 11 years. I'd like to thank my family, especially for all the support they've given me. 
definitely my coaches over the years, uh, especially in high school, it's been a huge support and being able to develop into the player I am today. Uh, my favorite memory throughout all of soccer would be my sophomore year. Uh, I deflected a ball in the last six seconds to keep Elkins from scoring and delivering a win for the Knights. Thank you for watching Press Night Soccer. Welcome to the rug, ladies and gentlemen, at Preston High School. Once again, Preston Knight Varsity Sports Action. Tonight, soccer takes the reins here on Cable Channel 7 as we get set for Preston Knight Varsity Soccer Action coming up momentarily. And you see the captains uh, down here along with the officials uh, having a little meeting. And we're just about set for the introduction of players, the national anthem, and the beginning of action here as the Knights take on the Philip Barber Colts here in Kingwood on an absolutely glorious early October evening here in the mountains. If you made it out for this contest, uh, we thank you for your support of the Knights. And if you haven't had a chance to get up here and watch a uh, soccer match on the pitch here at Preston High, uh, please get up here soon and do so. It will be an evening you will enjoy. Uh, both the uh, men and women's squads uh, on the card for tonight, uh, weather permitting. And as I said before, it is a gloriously Beautiful early fall evening here on the mountaintop, and I think we'll be able to get both matches in tonight. Not always the case here with weather, as uh, we watch the uh, white-clad knights get ready for uh, introductions here. But uh, we have had uh, differing weather, and uh, fortunate tonight to have clear blue skies overhead and uh, a good night for soccer here on the mountaintop. I'm Steve Blake, here on the Atlantic Broadband Cable Network, joined uh, here momentarily by my partner Terrell Rees, and uh, we are glad to have him on board once again. Uh, Terrell, good to see you out here on the mountaintop, and we have a beautiful night for soccer. Well, it's good to be back. It is a beautiful night for soccer, not near as windy as it was last time we were up here. No, absolutely not. Uh, the uh, Knights come in... Uh, to this contest, looking to pick up a home win against the uh, five and six uh, Philip Barber Colts, and uh, they're five and six with two ties, and uh, come off of a loss against Bridgeport uh, back on the uh, 30th of September, uh, coming into this match uh, tonight. So they're on a uh, two-loss. Uh, little scheme here. They want to turn it around. The Knights want to prevent that. Now, uh, my information is a little bit lacking um, because I don't have current information on the Knights um, on the Knights as far as wins and losses. Carol, what can you tell us? I, I'm going from memory here, but I believe it's five wins, four losses, and two ties. Mm -hmm. And their last uh, tie was against uh, East Fairmont away. And then here on Tuesday night, they had a win against Grafton 2-3. to three. Okay, well that brings us up to speed here as uh, the Knights get ready to try and extend that win streak. And uh, the Knights try to turn their season around a little bit here. Um, the blue and white, uh, white striped uniforms of the Colts with black trim. Again, the Knights in the home whites this evening. And if my information serves me correct, I think uh, last time we played this team last year, I think uh, I think we won 10 to nothing, but um, I'm not sure about the reliability of my sources. Philip Barber looking at their uh, looking at their roster, not an extremely deep team, and I'm not sure about their level of talent, although obviously they uh, they've picked up some wins on the season. Uh, but they are a relatively young team. Looking down the roster here, I see just five seniors and uh, and five juniors on the squad. So uh, they are in a little bit of a uh, retooling mode. I think at some of these youngsters um, from the uh, from the underclass, uh, a little bit of time on the field. Uh, and trying to rebuild, but uh, I'm sure that uh, as things go along here, we'll see what the uh, strategy is for uh, Philip Barber coach Ron Jones and uh, and his staff. And of course, uh, for Mike Adams, it's constant go mode for the Knights. They're going to work hard every week. 
they're going to battle in every match, and uh, if it's up to Mike, they're going to be victorious in every match. He's got a pretty good winning record. I'm not sure what it is, but he's got uh, quite a few wins, uh, a few losses, and a couple of ties here and there, but uh, he's a very winning coach. And I think a lot of that uh, has to do with his strategy of uh, having his team in uh, in very good physical condition. Their conditioning and their ability to run for the entire match man-to-man um, um, unparalleled against some of the teams that, that we've seen come in here. And I think the Knights have a track record of just wearing some squads out uh, over the course uh, of a complete match. That's the strategy. But sometimes the other teams we come up against are pretty well conditioned too. So uh, let's just hope that uh, we've got the better conditioning tonight. And I don't know if you've noticed, the uh, Knights are sporting brand new new uniforms. And we're going to do the national anthem. set to get this one underway on a bright sunlit evening here in Kingwood. And once again, we thank you for tuning in all along the Atlantic Broadband Cable Network. Or perhaps you're watching uh, on our YouTube feed at uh, www.youtube.com slash cable7. And if so, drop us an email. Uh, leave us a, a little note there on the uh, YouTube feed. Let us know if you enjoyed tonight's contest. And as always, we thank the sponsors that help bring you Preston Knight Varsity Soccer here on Cable Channel 7. Looks like we got both uh, teams getting ready to take the field. The refs are getting in position. Looks for another exciting night of Preston County soccer. A relatively sparse crowd across the way, but again, these matches midweek begin fairly early for some folks, and it's usually a little bit of a late arriving crowd by the time some of these moms and dads get uh, home from work and are able to get over here. Yeah, I know. And uh, the Knights do uh, usually have pretty good support, and uh, I see that the crowds for some of these teams coming in here to play are getting a little bigger as uh, the seasons roll by. And the closer the proximity to you, the more people you're going to get for them. Now, uh, Philip Barber just down the way, and uh, not a bad drive to get here. So uh, hopefully, as the seats fill in across the way, um, we'll have a, uh, a good full crowd here tonight uh, for this match. And, uh, and the Lady Knights play right after this, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, we don't even have to say weather permitting tonight because yeah, I think I, we're going we're gonna to get two matches in this time. I think we're going to be pretty good this time. I'm a little more worried about tomorrow night's football game <laughs> weather-wise than I am soccer. Okay, we are underway here on the rug, and uh, Philip Barber at midfield with possession of the ball here, but the Knights battling it away. And we'll see what the Knights can do with it tonight. Ball's going to be out. Looks like it's going to be a throw in for the Knights. Nice throw in across the way there. Philip Barber defensively right there to back that one out to midfield where the Knights will take it. 
try to go on the attack. And right now, Philip Barber is uh, pretty stout defensively. They always seem to have a man around that ball as it's coming down in play. Uh, not letting the Knights sneak anything behind them toward the goal early. Well, looks like it's going to be another throw in for the Knights. From the near side this time. And it's out now. Barber, Phil Barber gets throw in. Another thing with the new uniforms, everybody's got their own number this time. There were a few duplicates on the field there the past couple of past couple of games. Sometimes a little bit of confusion with it. A little confusion, especially when they're calling in from the field. If they don't know who the kid is, they're you know, you may be on the field twice and not even uh, not even know it. All right, Mike's getting one out of the hole there, uh, deep in their own territory, and now the midfielders take over here and uh, try to preserve the opportunity for the Knights to get something going offensively. Everybody looks a little sluggish this evening to me. Just need to warm up here. Philip Barber on the attack there in midfield turned away. And the Knights up there battling a foul there. So yeah, looking to, looking to get that into position for a shot there and a collision. And uh, so Barber takes the free kick. Official right on top of that one across the. Uh, that was field a good call. But we're still going to get to keep it on the Knights' side of the field. Early on, this has the look of a uh, hotly contested game and a very physical one if uh, Philip Barber has the conditioning to stay with us. Well, it'll be an interesting game. I'm interested to see who scores first. That always sets the tone for the rest of the game. Colts on the ball right now, and they push it forward, looking for a scoring opportunity, but that is swallowed up. Cordell Peasley, the goalie. And we get a look at Peasley here as he kicks that one out of goal up over midfield. And the Colts just a little quicker getting to the ball here early. Sending it back the other way and out of bounds. Lively battling for the ball, and uh, it's taken by Evan Thomas. And the run is Alex Barlow. Once again, I think oh, you've got double, the, double number the, on the roster. Double here. number on the roster. I need so to adjust my roster. Thank you. Evan used to, is, used to have wear the number one, but uh, he's wearing number nine tonight. And we'll make the correction here, and I'll have to speak to. Uh, I know who takes care of these pages uh, that we get this information from. I'll have to speak to him about that. Okay, uh, that ball's going to be, I think, out in the far corner. And Coach Mike Adams, very animated right now and not in a good way uh, as his team is not pleasing him right now. He's looking for a little more effort, I think, both mentally and physically from the Knights at this point. And the... Uh, Colts, again, just very, very quick to the ball, and their strategy right now seems to be a good one uh, for them. They're putting pressure on the Knights uh, offensively and forcing us to fall back and, and defend instead of attack. 
What did you say their record was for this year? Uh, I have the Philip Barber record at this point at, uh, let's see. I think it's on that side. I have the Philip Barber record, I believe, at, uh, Well, we'll find it again here a little bit later. And the ball is out of the field. Tyler with the shot. Currently have the uh, Philip Berber Colts at uh, five wins, six losses, and two ties. Okay, so they're they're doing about the same as Preston is. And looking at their history of late, when they win, they win big. Uh, wins over North Marion and Petersburg by. Uh, Eight to one and six to one, respectively, in a six-two victory over Lincoln. And that was uh, a goal by Preston, by the way. And that does indeed set the tone. Set the tone. That for Mike it. Adams wants for the Knights to score early and to to get more aggressive offensively. So that was the first goal within the first uh, seven minutes. Phil Barber is going to look to return that as quick as possible. And I think that's going to give Preston just a little bit of momentum to want to stay on the field. Phil, I'm the number 24, Alex Barlow. Yep, looks like a nice call. A little bit of shoving going on there. And again, the Colts take possession, so the throw in on the near side here. And the Knights trying to box that ball out, and in fact, they do. Tyler Davis giving a good battle for that ball over there. The ball is going to be thrown in by 24, Alex Barlow. Number one is his brother, Nicholas. And I get those mixed up all the time. The boys just refer to him as Big B and Little B on the field. Knights with the throw in from the corner and an opportunity here battling with that one and in the goal. So that's two goals for the Knights in just under nine minutes. So that may set the tone for the rest of the evening. That's kind of what we were hoping for. And that goal was uh, basically had by just persistence. The Knights refused to give up the ball in front of the net there and just kept working it and working it. It took about three or four attempts, but they managed to get that one in goal. And that was... Uh, Frustrating for the Philip Barber goalie there as he was kind of surrounded and outmanned, outnumbered, and looking for some help, but it arrived too late. So it looks like there was a little bit of roughness against uh, on call against Preston. Free kick for Philip Barber. And Preston's going to send it right back down the field. Preston fighting hard to get it back out of their territory. Ryan Farrell leading the charge down the field.
I'm not complaining, but the glare of that sun is pretty bright. <laughs> As the sun uh, edges a little more to the west here, we'll, we'll suffer through that for a bit, and then uh, maybe we'll be able to see the game a bit clearer. Yeah. Knights are able to uh, push it into Philip Barber territory here. And now back to midfield where Preston controls the ball. There's another shot on the goal. Force that ball right back down there. Nice play by uh, the goalie for uh, Philip Barber. He saved the score there, and uh, Preston has picked up the tempo here and picked up the aggression on offense. They're, uh, they're really pushing right now with this two-zip advantage to try and get another score and uh, really put the Philip Barber Colts back on their heels. And Preston's going to have another scoring opportunity here off of a corner kick. And a little too much, and it goes over the top of the goal and out. Had the right idea, just a little too much on that ball. A little too much on the, on the upshot. So it'll be a goal kick for Philip Barber. Coach Adams loves those corner kicks, though. He's got a number of different scenarios. <laughs> for those, and uh, I've seen the Knights uh, snuck in and seen the Knights in practice a little bit working on that, and he is a stickler for perfection. <laughs> yeah, corner kicks are an excellent opportunity to score. I mean, we've seen several several games won here just off a few corner kicks. We get a look at Coach Mike Adams there as he makes his point. With two, Jacob Wilson in the middle, and Ryan making a shot on the goal, and no one in there to help him out, but that was a pretty good shot. Yeah, very, very, very close there, Farrell. Philip <laughs> Barber getting a lot of work down here defending the goal. And they're trying to uh, push this out. Try to get back on the offensive end of the field. They uh, trail the Knights two zip at this uh, at this point. Looking for a free kick here and an opportunity. The Knights. Put this ball back in play, and Philip Barber defending at midfield. Kick was by Colton Wilson. And Philip Barber gets a chance to kick it back the field, basically for one of the same reasons.
We ought to put a we'll put a mic on Coach Adams just for the entertainment factor. Oh, I think it would be very entertaining, but uh, we might have to put the eight-second rule into effect at times. So I'm not saying anything bad. They're just a very animated coach. And, uh, Collision at midfield there. Yeah. Looks like they called that against Preston. Here comes the free kick from the Colts. Their head butts it back into the middle of the field. Lights come forward, put some pressure on the ball. Number six, Tyler Davis is fighting hard for that. You're right, it's going to be a physical game tonight. Yeah, we've seen... Uh, We've seen our share of collisions and bumps already here, and uh, I think the trainers are going to be a little bit busy this evening. Not sure the casual fan realizes just how physical uh, soccer at this level can become. I know uh, when I first started... Uh, Looking at the Knights and their soccer efforts, I was surprised both the boys and the girls. Uh, very, very aggressive play, and it's a very physical contest. And it's one of those things that just don't stop. These kids run for 90 minutes straight. A nice defensive move by Phil Barber to keep our players from getting to the ball there. Knights still controlling it. with a free kick out of the goal here. They pulled uh, 26 Kieran Dam out for a uh, little collision he had out there, you saw. And he's still got a little bit of, looks like his head's a little sore. They poured some water on him and they're um, holding a bandage to his top of his head. Looks like he yeah, got scratched he or something. Yeah, they're looking at that pretty close. He must, uh, yeah, must have got a little scrape on top of his head. And you can't play with there's any blood. So they're trying to get some, whatever's going on there, stopped so he can go back yeah. in. That gave uh, number three, uh, Junior Noss, a chance to go in and play for him. Corner kick and an opportunity here. And kicked out of the air. The goalie. And after being initially a little bit overwhelmed on his first two goals, uh, he's done a very good job for the Colts here uh, in the last five, six minutes of play. He's getting a lot of action tonight. He is certainly uh, earning his keep at this point, trying to uh, prevent the Knights from stretching this lead any further here in the first half of play. Oh, a little wide. Tyler Davis taking a shot on goal, just a little bit wide. Another good aggressive uh, run out and a, a nice attack by the Knights there. We got number 26, Kieran Dam, going in for our number five, Spencer Lively. take advantage of uh, the break and play there to make a couple of substitutions as well. Try 
trying to counter uh, and get a good matchup against the Knights here. Preston back on the attack. Favoring the left side of the field here. Karen, Karen Dam was stopped. Goalie recovered the ball. But we'll send it back down. And that's going to be out on the near side. Colts with uh, good fielding here. Pushing it into the nice end of the uh, rug and getting an opportunity here as they approach the net. Good defense by the Knights. Colby Wilson didn't want to get too close, so it looks like he kicked it out. So this is going to be a throw in from the sideline. Preston gets that out of there. Now that looked like it was off of uh, number nine for the Colts there. It looked like it was off on blue to me as well. So if that's the case, then we get a shot at a corner kick. But. Yep, that's what it's going to be. Yeah, that the equivalent of a fast break for the uh, Knights there as they took that ball off the throw in by Philip Barber and brought that quickly down uh, the way here along the side and, and then crossed into the middle and uh, took it. The 12 Taylor Jennings taking the kick. Headed right into the goal. Excellent shot by Kieran Dan. So that makes it three. Nice job as the uh, Knights extend their lead now. Three zip. That was a good head, header into the goal by Kieran Dan. That was almost textbook. So we got less than 18 minutes in the first half of the, of the game. Here on the mountaintop in Kingwood, the Philip Barber Colts having a difficult time offensively, but uh, they've played a, a nice physical contest here with our Knights uh, in the first half of this. As they look to get it untracked here and uh, create a scoring opportunity. Those have been few and far between. Uh, in this first period of play for Philip Barber. All over the end line. It looks like the ball was out on us. Looks like Jay Baker tried to get it out on them, but didn't quite make it. So that's going to be a corner kick for the Colts. We'll see what they can do with it. All right, nice corner kick in there and good defense again by the Knights and Philip Barber hustling to maintain possession of the ball here and get a shot on goal. A lot of kicking going on. Nobody seems to have clear control. Now nah, we're buying a little time getting out of there. And at this point, I think a lot of teams would uh, would try to take some time off the clock, but I suspect the Knights are, are going to continue to play more aggressively than that. I don't think Coach Adams happy at all with a 3-0 uh, lead. No, I don't think he's happy until the lead is, uh, lead is high and the game is over. All right, Colts with another opportunity here and turned away once again. Preston uh, just a little bit too tough defensively when their backs are against the wall here. 
It'll be a throw in for the Knights. And number five, Spencer Lively is going in for 13, Jay Baker, coming back out. Coast on the attack once again here. Trying to maneuver for a shot. Getting it down in dangerous territory. And a little too much on that ball. Yeah, kicked out the back by Preston. It's going to be another corner kick for the Colts. There's the kick. Keep round through the other side. Again, the ball out over the back line. Nice defensive effort by the Knights. Sealing that side of the goal off and uh, preventing a clean shot. So it'll be another corner kick for the uh, Colts. And Preston sends it back down the field. And this is another opportunity where the Knights push it aggressively forward. Now the Colts able to get back and, and defend a little better that time, Terrell. Their midfield kind of, kind of got through their midfield that their defenders were there to stop it. Oh, out on the near side. Bit of substitution going in for Preston here. At number 17, Ward Reese going in. Number 14, Sean Loudermilk going in. And I saw uh, number, number two, two, Jacob Wilson also went in. Giving some of the younger players a shot this evening. Knights work that ball into the middle. But uh, unable to get a shot there. And I believe uh, the Colts get a penalty kick. A uh, free kick. Free kick. It's a penalty, but it's called a free kick. The penalty kick is where it's just when they get the shot directly on the goal. on a little run here, trying to get that shot on goal, and the uh, ball's easily picked up by yeah. Cordell. A little, bit of, a little bit of work for Cordell here uh, as this first half of action uh, winds along. He's had plenty of excitement, but he hadn't had to work too hard. Dangerous situation averted there by, by the Knights. Philip Barber with a couple of uh, scorers in, potential scorers in position there, but uh, unable to control that ball and direct it toward the goal. Got a couple more players going in for the Knights. I saw uh, Denny Graham going in, and I think I saw Evan Thomas. Yes. Here's the corner kick again uh, for the Colts. And I don't think that went exactly the way they had it planned. They did not. They've, they've had several opportunities on the corner kick, and uh, every time been stopped by the Knights defense. And their, their execution of the kick, not, not bad, but uh, 
They don't seem quite as aggressive in going after that ball when it comes to the middle as the Knights are uh, when they get a good corner kick opportunity. Of course, that's just my opinion, and if you're down there on the field, you might see it a different way. Throw in for Preston. Just over ten and a half minutes remaining in the first half of this match, and uh, Reminder for fans that are tuning in, uh, we'll have the uh, completion of the uh, varsity boys contest and we'll have the uh, Lady Knights coming up next here on Cambridge Channel 7 as uh, we have dual matches here with Philip Barber uh, at home in Kingwood tonight. You know, a heated battle at midfield for the ball. It sure is. And it's out across the way. And a throw in for the Knights. Preston seems to concentrate on getting some mileage out of those throw-ins more so than it seems like Philip Barber. They're, they're more interested in controlling the ball when they get a throw-in along the side and maybe not, uh, maybe not trying to take it as deep. Here come the Colts with a good uh, opportunity that's turned away once again. Once again, taken down the field by Clayton Collins. Colts midfielders hustling over there defensively, getting control of that ball, trying to bring it back downfield. Now we'll see what Mike Adams does. I'm just looking across the field. He's got a lot of his uh, junior players in there, a lot of freshmen, some sophomores. Valuable minutes for these guys uh, right now in the heat of battle uh, against a physical Philip Barber squad. They may be down 3-0 uh, to the Knights, but uh, they are battling out there. And Coach Adams... Uh, He's taking every there, opportunity to coach yeah, there's, he can. there's no let up on the uh, on the younger players of the team. He expects performance from them the same way he does the, his starters. Well, they know what they're in for. Yep. And they're all happy to be out there playing too. We afford you a little better look now that the sun begins to slip down to the uh, horizon on the west. Here come the Knights down the near side. Working to get that ball across midfield, set up a scoring opportunity. And I'm sure there's nothing these, uh, these younger players would like uh, than to get a score here at this juncture. We'd like to get their, get their name on the board, that's for sure. Seven minutes left in the half. Here comes, uh, here come the Colts once again. But nobody on the receiving end of that kick. And the ball goes out. Another uh, substitution, number 17. You don't have to do anything unless it starts flying. Now, like Goff, looks like he's going in for Ward Reese is coming off.
position, and the ball is going to be kicked out of bounds by Alexander Barlow. Throw in by the Colts. And kicked back out by the Colts, so Preston gets to throw it back in. These younger uh, night players, although they haven't been able to uh, put the ball in goal and, and score, doing a good job defensively here on the Colts right now, preserving the shutout so far. Like it's going to be a free kick for the Colts against the Knights. It's again, it's a very physical game this evening. And kick straight into Cordell Peasley, who will kick it back down the field. I'm surprised that the Colts didn't try to set up something uh, a little more strategic. Uh, yeah, a little more strategic, uh, something with a little misdirection to it in that situation. They just took a straight shot at the goal there and with a uh, goalie the quality of Cordell, I, I don't see how you, you figure that's going to make it. Maybe that was their trick, hoping we wouldn't suspect it. Uh, oh, nice stop. A little more of a threat that time by that Philip one, Barber. That one had us all a little bit nervous. And turned away, as you saw it there from behind the goal. And uh, turned away nicely by the Knights. The Colts are going to have... Uh, a kick from the side here, putting the ball in play right in front of the net. And again, it is scooped up by Peasley. His height is definitely an advantage to him. That's a big goal if you stay in it. Well, it is, and uh, he, he fills that space well from the standpoint of being not just a big guy, but he's also very, very mobile, very quick, and, and I like his patience. He doesn't move on the ball until he sure he knows where it's headed. It's going to be a free kick for the Knights. Alex Barlow's taking the kick. Down in front of the goal. And turned away by the Colts. Preston going to try to keep it in this end. Oh, and too much of the kick. Got a little bit too excited. Whoa. That had all the makings of going right in the top there. That looked like the top left corner, but uh, think, just just a little bit high. I think Colton Wilson got just a little bit too excited there and needed a little bit more foot than he needed to. That quarter, his eyes got a little wide when he saw that goal there. <laughs> It looked too easy. It's a lot of whistle blowing tonight. This ref doesn't like any contact out there. You know, for as surprisingly as physical as this game uh, has been, he's not taking anything uh, away from the enthusiasm of either one of these squads. He hasn't been able to slow that, uh, that down a bit. Looks like oh. the first goal for the night uh, for the Colts. Colts got a nice cross there, right into the lower corner. He's a go for it, but no goal. Or no joy on stopping that goal. All right, well that makes it 3-1 at the 1:35 mark of the first half. The first score for Philip Barber, and that. Uh, raises their spirits a little bit here and they're going to try to attack now get aggressive and get after that ball once again this, uh, they have not had much success offensively and they're starting to feel a little more power now Good battle for the ball there they've got some very good players on their team
Bill Barber can feels it now. They got a little taste of a goal there. They're hungry for more. Just under a minute left in the first half. Midfield with the Knights trying to box that ball in and uh, stop progress. But Phil Barber having none of it. Scooting that ball quickly down the right side there, and they get a shot on goal, but kind of a kind of a tepid one. And that's going to be one kick for Cordell, and that'll be the end of the half. All right, well, we come to the end of the first half of play in this uh, doubleheader tonight. Uh, the men taking the uh, field first, and the Philip Barber Colts uh, put on a good effort here in the first half, but the Knights do most of the scoring and lead 3-1 as we go to the half. Stay tuned for more soccer action here from the rug at Preston High School. We'll be back after these messages with the start of the second half. I'd like to thank my parents and Coach Mike and Coach Rod and Coach Eddie for bringing me to the player I am today. I've been playing soccer for 13 years, played defense for eight of those years. Um, my favorite soccer memory came this year when we carried a 260 pound pack of boards three miles. And thanks for watching Preston High Soccer on Channel 7. From a simple switch troubleshooting a problem, a new service, to that backup generator that you'll need in times of emergency. Blake Electric can handle all your electrical needs. They have the experience and knowledge to do it professionally and safely and do the job right the first time. There's been an accident. The emergency has left you with physical trauma and legal issues to deal with. The bills are piling up and you're overwhelmed. Where do you turn for legal representation? Hi, I'm Paul Easton. And I'm Steve Schaefer. We're attorneys practicing right here in your home county of Preston. Centrally located on West Main Street in Kingwood, just across from McDonald's, the offices of Eastep and Schaefer are an easy drive from anywhere in Preston County. You don't have to go outside Preston County to hire a lawyer with the know-how, the experience, and the knowledge to represent you fairly in a serious personal injury matter. Call us at East Eppin Schaefer at 329-6003 or visit us on the web at www.eastepschaeferlaw.com. <laughs> what? What do you think you're doing now? I'm going to play soccer. With their high guys, Buck, you need to put my winter treads on, change my brakes, and change my oil. We have to get to the Preston High soccer game tonight. Rainbow Tire, the tire lady takes care of me. Mill Chapel United Brethren in Christ invites you out to Sunday worship, Children's Church at 8.30 on Sunday morning, Sunday school at 9.45, worship services at 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Mill Chapel has small groups and Bible studies for men, women, and youth. And Mill Chapel is proud to announce they've partnered with the Red Cross and is a Preston County Disaster Relief Center, supported by a large generator system that allows the church to be fully functional in times of power outages. Mill Chapel United Brethren on the Kingwood Pike, Reedsville. Something new at Peasley's Service Center. Well, first of all, they've got thousands of new tires, any kind of tire for any kind of car or truck at Peasley's. And a great price on those tires, so make sure you have good, fresh tires to finish the winter. Now, 
They also have a new alignment machine. It's by Hunter. It is state-of-the-art, and it's big enough to align your crew cab, long bed truck, your dually, your truck up to a 550 size, even oversized tires. Tires are now the best alignment around at Peasley's. Quality feed from Hubbard and Showright Feed. That's what you'll find at Child's Feed and Supply. But Child's Feed and Supply is more than just feed, lots more. You'll find the tough steel trimmers and chainsaws, DR Power Equipment, Snapper and Snapper Pro Lawn and Garden Equipment, Generators by Briggs & Stratton, and, of course, Child's Services, what they sell. Plus, it's time to stock up on wood pellets for the winter. Child's has them. Child's Feed and Supply, more than just feed. Second light either way along Route 7 in Kingwood. Childs. Good luck to the Preston High Knights soccer team. Tyler Davis, mom and dad say go get them. And folks, while you're traveling to and from the soccer games, be sure to stop by Becky's Restaurant, Route 26, south of Kingwood. They're right beside the Heldreth Motel. Let's go Knights from Becky's Restaurant. Hello, this is Aaliyah from Spike's Chimney Sweep. As we are enjoying the heat from the summer sun, we have to remember Old Man Winter will be here knocking on our door soon. Now's the time to start thinking of your heating needs. Here at Spikes, we have you covered with a variety of heating products. We carry wood, coal, pellet, and gas. Give us a call at 304-864-3435 or stop by and get prepared for winter now. We strive to keep you warm inside while old man winter blows outside. Choose the right path for your real estate needs. Locally owned Mountain Path Properties, LLC in Arthurdale. We provide full real estate services to all of North Central West Virginia. Our professional realtors are equipped to provide clients with the highest standard of service in the industry, and we value the opportunity to assist our neighbors and friends in buying, selling, leasing, or managing all types of property. Mountain Path Properties will even represent the buyer at no cost in any transaction no matter which real estate company the property is listed with. So, don't just call a number on a sign. Call Mountain Path Properties and get a professional realtor that will work for you. Oh, and if you're thinking of selling your home, call us for a free market analysis to help determine the value of your property today. Whether your little one has an earache or you simply have a sinus infection, it's urgent that you get the care you need fast. That's why they call them urgent care facilities and not drive 45 minutes to an out-of-area hospital facilities. Fortunately, Preston Memorial Hospital now has an urgent care facility that's open seven days a week, so all Preston residents can get the immediate attention they need and get better as quickly as possible. Preston Memorial Hospital Urgent Care at the Route 7 Kingwood Pike intersection. Hi, my name is Danny Graham. I've been playing soccer for 13 years, and I play midfield and striker for Preston High. Uh, I'd like to thank my parents and my coaches throughout the years for helping me develop and be a better player than what I have been in the past. Um, my favorite memory is scoring a goal uh, my junior year over in Maryland, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching Preston High Nights on Channel 7. We return to the rug here at Preston High. Second half action just about set to get underway as you see the Preston Knights breaking the huddle. And Preston enjoying a 3-1 lead over a pretty good Philip Barber Colt squad. The Knights scoring early in the uh, contest, getting uh, three good offensive uh, four A's and putting the ball in the net and uh, holding the Philip Barber Colts until just about the final minute of first half play, scoreless. But uh, Philip Barber then sort of found their, uh, found their way and uh, became more aggressive, scoring again in that final minute of the first half, their first goal of the evening. And so Preston now hoping to hold them to one goal. And uh, I'm sure Coach Mike Adams will be looking for uh, some additional aggression from uh, the Knights. It's been somewhat a physical contest here this evening in the first half. And uh, we've seen that uh, cut both ways on these squads. But as the Knights warm up here and get set to go, uh, 
Uh, no injury problems. Uh, nobody out of play for either squad here. And uh, the Knights control it to get things started with second half action as uh, we go back to work here uh, in Kingwood and the crowd filling in a little bit across the way. We thank you for tuning in here on Cable Channel 7 to this edition of Preston Knight Varsity Sports as we have a soccer doubleheader this evening against the Colts. Uh, another half of action as we just start second half play and the Colts get uh, a throw in here. Uh, and then the Lady Knights will take the pitch and we'll see them go to work against the uh, Philip Barber Colts as well. Coming up uh, after the conclusion of this contest right here on Cable Channel 7. Terrell Rees rejoins me in the booth and uh, Terrell, an exciting first half and I uh, look for uh, Coach Mike Adams to expect nothing less than perfection in this second half. Uh, from his squad uh, and try to turn this uh, Philip Barber Colt offense away with uh, just one goal on the evening. I noticed he put a lot of his um, starters back on the field for the beginning of the second half. And although it's been a physical contest, everybody looks to be in uh, good shape. Nobody, uh, nobody out uh, due to an injury. Uh, and although the officials have tried to keep it a little less physical, uh, these two squads going at it pretty hard here as we start the second half. 38 minutes to go in the contest. A little bit, a little bit of offsides action there. Yeah. Preston defending the goal to our left now. So now the camera shots will be behind Philip Barber's goal. Colton Wilson taking the free kick. Yeah. Nicely played by Philip Barber, but the Knights continue to control it. Working over midfield, trying to get something going here and the coach say nothing doing and send that ball right back out. It's a little bit easier to see now that the glare of the sun is gone. Yeah, we're under the lights uh, for the first time this evening here. And uh, give you a nice view as nice that view shot up. just goes wide of the goal there. A nice shot, just a little wide. And it's going to be a corner kick for Preston as the goalie just barely touched it on the way out. Or oh, fumbled by the goalie, and it's in dangerous territory for the Colts. And they actually did a pretty good job, all things considered, getting that ball out of there uh, as the Knights put that just about exactly where they wanted and just couldn't quite get the scoring kick. Knights pass it around the field a little bit to help get their players uh, set up. Throw in for the Colts. And if the Knights have an advantage in conditioning, we'll see it come into play here uh, pretty soon in this second half. Right now the Colts uh, look to be a pretty good match. Uh, physically for Preston. They seem to be running at about the same speed they uh, they were in the first half and with about the same degree of intensity thus far. A little bump on Kieran's head in the first half. Didn't seem to slow him down for the second half. Oh, nice cross into the middle and again Philip Barber doing a good job back there, kind of packing the box full and keeping that ball away from the goal. A little bit too much on the kick, and that's going to be out. 
It's going to be a throw in for the Colts. Throwing down the line, and it's bounced out. So that now will be a throw in for Preston. 26, no. Second number five, Spencer Life is going to take the throw. Nice shot. Stopped by the goalie. Dangerous territory. Yes, and it's a nice goal by number five, Spencer Lively. Pulled that goalie out of the box and then uh, crossed that ball right in front of him and put it in the net. missed it and it went in. So that brings the score to four, Preston, one for the Barber. First goal of the second half. And Preston extends that lead back to three. With uh, still 34 minutes remaining in the contest, I don't know if that takes any air out of the Philip Barber Colt uh, squad offensively. Yeah, there's still a lot of time left in this game, but it's a hard fight to get back from three goals down. Oh, we've got a Colt player down. I think he took that one. Right in the face. And he's in uh, some obvious distress there on the ground. They're going to take a minute to check him out. Check him out. They take concussions very, very seriously. And I don't know if that's what he's got, but they want him checked out yeah, before he gets up. Make sure that uh, he doesn't have any issues there. And they'll stop the clock at 33:44. Definitely got his eyes watered. I don't see any blood, so hopefully not anything like a broken nose. But I can see that happening in that situation oh, quite easily. Looks like he's going to be all right. He's going to walk that off, and probably not the first time he's absorbed a a tough blow. As uh, as have most of these uh, most of these kids and uh, these soccer players impress me with their their overall just toughness. They're tough. If they're not tough, they don't make it to this far. This is a whole different level of play than what you'll see in the rec leagues. That'll generate uh, a little substitution. And Philip Barber will get set to throw in here. Preston now can afford to take a little bit of time setting things up when they're in this situation, Terrell. And, uh, not that they want to try and run clock quite yet, but uh, they have they have some they have the, the, the leisure time that they yeah, can they, do they can they can still be aggressive, but they can take their time to get exactly uh, the position they want on the field and uh, get get men in uh, in the right spot. Six, Tyler Davis working around the players there, trying to get a good... And he's surrounded and surrounded Colts. by four Colts. Wasn't much he could do there. Here come the Colts. They get a little bit of a breakaway. Break. Looks, looking a little dangerous there. Cordell's on it, though. Tackles that ball. Good job for Cordell Peasley. Slings that one well out to midfield. And the coach going to try to get something going once again here. Again, on that last uh, on that last stop by Cordell, you saw him 
pick his moment there to attack that uh, old rushing player and tackle that ball. That's got to be a little scary seeing those guys come right at you full force with cleats. Yeah. Cordell with the free kick here out of goal. And we got Junior Noss going in for Evan Thomas. Taking their time at midfield here with possession of this uh, ball right now. The key factor keeping uh, the Colts from doing what they're trying to do right here. Get another shot on goal. That's the break on that. Shut down. Now we'll see if Preston can do the same thing on this end of the field. That's going to be a trip. Looks like it's going to be a free kick for Preston down there. So they'll set that up as quick as they can, take advantage of that. calling that a deliberate push. Yeah, he uh, he came all the way across uh, the pitch there. And so uh, that player is going to have to set. Ref is calling to stop the clock. That comes at the, uh, about the 29.50 uh, mark. minutes back on the clock. They're back at 31.48. Yeah, about a, about a minute and eight seconds back on the clock. That official had a long way to come across here to explain that call to the coaches and then they get the clock stopped. He doesn't, uh, doesn't have the ability electronically to do that himself. Right, and we don't have a press so box here just to, yet. So that well, they, they have to relay that all the way down to the end of the field. So uh, 31.48 on a stopped clock. We got a yellow card for a Preston player. So another deliberate shoving from, from apparently. So they'll sit out for one play and they'll go both go back in. So Clayton Collins is going to come out and um, Jacob Wilson looks like he's going in. Maybe we can get back to some soccer here. All right, Alexander Barlow is going to take the kick. So they start the clock. Mm -hmm. Nice job by the goalie season that up. He gets that out to midfield. Philip Barber trying to get a run going and Preston. Trying to keep it from happening. Back there defensively takes that out of bounds. And they'll have an opportunity to get set here defensively. Not give Philip Barber such a quick run at the goal. And they're going to have the throw in from the side here. And Cordell locks it up. Come the Colts down the near side and Preston at midfield. Nice stop. Tyler Davis is going to attempt to cross it in front of the goal. 
Just too many Colts out there impeding his progress. Yeah, he's double teamed over there, kind of boxed in. But that's going to be out. It looks like we're going to get the corner kick, which we'll take that. Yeah, that, uh, that plays right into Coach Adams' strategy. Hey, it's got to be! No question, it has to be! Yeah, they did a little thing called a goalie rush where they got the goalie out of the box, and they got everybody down there. And our Cornell is going to have to beat feet. Nope. Looks like we're going to get a chance for the corner kick. Get as many players down there as yeah. we can, which leaves us a little vulnerable with no one in our goal. But sometimes it's worth trying. Now this would be a little bit of a kill shot if the Knights were able to get a goal right here. Now Cordell's got a beat feed back to his goal to protect it. Just turned away, and he's hustling downfield. And he's got plenty of time oh, now. Oh, and we've uh, got a uh, flag. Got a flag out there if there was some contact right at midfield. And that gives Cordell a little bit of a break. Plenty of time. Freston gets the kick. Apparently the uh, call was against uh, the Colts. That always makes me nervous when they take the goalie out of the box. That's part of the fun, though. It's exciting. And not something that uh, Coach Adams is, is want to do uh, very often. Uh, he's doing it again, though. We got another yeah, he's, kick. Uh, I think he smells blood in the water here. I think he does. He's got a lot of faith in his uh, defense to get down there to protect that goal. He's trying to put a lot of pressure on the Philip Barber Colts right here. Oh, oh and that... That was an opportunity Almost that just came went through. by. Just a little too exciting. Too excitement there. Didn't get it in the goal. The opportunity was there, though. And with the aggressive style that the Knights like to play anyway, you know these players have to love it when, uh, when Coach Adams calls that. Yes. Well, you have a lot of confidence in your team, too, to call something like that. So. Nice volley, and the Colts get the ball over midfield. And it's the Knights who have to hustle defensively a little bit right now. And they do a good job turning that drive away. Get it back down to the other end of the field, and it's volleyed back up. the nice trying to put the ball in the danger zone but just too many blue uniforms down there all right it's gonna be a throw in for the knights ryan farrell with the throw in there's that's didn't look particularly good. I wonder what they'll call that. Looked like there was a little extra body on that ball in the goal, but apparently it was not. So it's going to be another goalie rush. And it and it looked like the Knights had uh, the Philip Barber goalie a little bit out of position right there, too. Yeah, he did. rather quickly out of bounds, leaving Philip Barber to take command of the uh, ball here. Just under 26 minutes remaining in regulation. 
And then the next substitution looks like you're going to put Johnny Crosby in the goal and give uh, Cordell Pizzi a little break. Aggressive goalie on for Philip Barber. Yeah, he gets he gets after that ball pretty good out there on the wing, but leaves that goal wide open. Mm -hmm. If he uh, slips up and they get that ball past him, he's going to pay a heavy price. Fun to watch. That it is. Not a not a boring style of play at all. And I can see where the Colts against a team that they match up well against speed wise or, or can overpower. Uh, I can see where they've had games uh, uh, that have led to a lot of scoring opportunities that have been successful. Uh, that was a nice rush, but just a little bit too much. So that's going to be a goal kick for Philip Barber, and they're not wasting any time getting the ball off the line. We're trailing by three at four to one now. Uh, they've got to move pretty smartly with the ball here. Uh, 23 minutes isn't a lot of time to make up three goals. And the Knights are doing... Uh, everything they can to keep the ball on this end of the field. Colts have not had a really good breakaway attempt here for about the last five minutes. And they get a chance to set up here for a free kick. Kicked out of bounds, so it'll be a throw in for the Colts. For a brief substitution for the Colts. Twenty two minutes and twenty two seconds left in the second half. Preston, again, just doing a nice job defensively, not allowing the Colts to get that ball in a dangerous scoring position. But we've got a Although we've got penalty a, here. Yep, so the Colts are going to get a free kick and not a good spot for us to do that. So hopefully Johnny's on the ball here. Johnny on the spot. Though. And a little bit too much, and it goes over the back of the goal. No score. Good opportunity, though, the right idea. Yeah, faced with that many white shirts, uh, he tried to put that ball high enough that they couldn't deflect it, but uh, just had to get a little bit too much on it to get it up there, I guess. job getting that out of there by Krosky and out at midfield. Mike Adams looks like he's once again getting ready to put uh, put the other half of his team in, so about his, his starters. Got the leisure of a 
got the luxury of a three extra points to give some of his other players some playing time tonight. A little, little bit of a cushion, so an opportunity, and uh, ooh, ooh, shot on goal there, stopped uh, smartly by the Philip Barber goalie. But a good look uh, at the Knights right there from behind the net. Nice setup, and that could be, oh, good lockup by the goalie. Good job. He's keeping Philip Barber uh, just, just hanging around in this contest. But I have a feeling hanging around isn't going to be quite enough here. A lot of action on the sidelines here. Throw in for the Knights. In case the viewer is wondering, it's the black line. That's the uh, boundary line. It gets real confusing when you're looking on the white lines for the football field. Yeah, those yard markers, markers don't mean a thing. Nope, they don't mean anything in this game. practice for these players to uh, discern the markings on a field like this and not get confused by any of the uh, the extra marks the right. extra marks that are there for other sports and the colors are different on different fields I mean, sometimes they're white sometimes they're pink or not pink sometimes they're orange and now with the advent of these artificial turf fields you can have uh, turf any color you like. So yep. <laughs> those lines can mean anything. So we get another goalie substitution. Peyton Fazenbaker is going to go in for Johnny Krosky. So all three goalies get a chance to play tonight. And these are really, really valuable minutes uh, for him in goal against uh, a Philip Barber team that's that's not going to let up here uh, throughout the they're, they're going to play till the horn sounds as hard as they can so uh, he's, he's going to get some quality time although I'm, I'm sure he might be hoping that Mike doesn't call another rush <laughs> yeah. I hope he doesn't at get this too much point. quality time if he gets too much quality time that means the defense is slacking up a little bit yeah. Seventeen thirty left to play. Got to be on your toes when you're the goalie and you're all the way back there for three or four minutes. Kind of by yourself. It's like being a left fielder. <laughs> right. <laughs> when the ball comes to you, you better yeah, be ready yeah. to catch it. Nothing, nothing happens for a while, and then it's your turn. All right, here we go with the goalie rush. Corner kick. Staying in. All right, Peyton better get back to his goal. Uh, look. This is going to test him. Well, he gets a little bit of help. He does. Ball's back down in the safe zone. Yeah, He's all right. That's what in that situation you, you got to count on your buddies. He got enough help to get back in the box there and make a nice stop. So that worked out well for him. But that, uh, for a younger goalie, that could be a little nerve-wracking. <laughs> yeah, he's a freshman this year. Mm -hmm. And obviously, uh, I'd say 100% uh, almost of these players have uh, probably played soccer 
at the youth level uh, coming up and, and getting into high school now at this level. The game's at a little bit of a different speed. My question for, for anybody that's a freshman goalie would be, was that the position you played at the youth level? Because if not, that's that's really kind of a paradigm shift for him to step into that uh, role on the, on the field. Now, anybody that's played goalie at the high school level, I'm sure has played in the rec league at some point. I can speak for ours presently. I know I know all three of these guys have played goalie in the rec league. Going to be throw in for Preston. Time for some substitutions. So it's going to be a massive substitution for the Preston team. I wouldn't even tell you who went in. Just say everybody else. <laughs> Everybody else on the bench is in the game. Mike Adams kind of platooning things now at the 14 and a half minute mark. And again, he'll expect nothing, uh, nothing less performance-wise. Yeah, it's not like you put in the B team though. He's got all very good players in there right now. I don't believe Mike thinks he has a B team. He doesn't. He just has people he starts first. And I'm sure he tells them all. Okay, that's going to be a you kick, a penalty kick right there. Yeah. The form of the wall. Preston forms the wall. Mike gets situated. They got a couple of the big guys in the middle there. That was a good job. A little miscue by uh, the Colts. No, I, want, I don't want to speak for him directly, but I would bet Coach Adams tells all of these players I'll find somebody that can do your job uh, yeah, if he's not question. happy. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to get a penalty call here. That's what it looks like. They're calling yeah. the same thing again. Well, I'd like to see an instant replay to see what happened. Yeah, so, I, don't, uh, I don't see the same thing the ref did there, but once again, I'm not... Uh, and this is a penalty kick. This is a direct yeah. kick on the goalie. Yeah, down to our right... Uh, protestations from the uh, Philip Marber coaching staff that that uh, the guy who was attacking the goal that time got grabbed. Yeah, that's a hard one to block. Yes, it is. So that's going to bring the score to Philip Barber to Preston's four. And that comes with still uh, a little over 12 and a half minutes remaining. So uh, the Colts again Going to play all the way to the whistle here, so there's no let up for the Knights at this point. They are going to uh, have to pick up the pace a little bit uh, on both ends of the field. So Preston will get to kick off here. They give up a little bit of that three-goal cushion that they uh, have enjoyed throughout the second half. Yeah, when you got 12 minutes left to play, and you've only got um, two goals. That's uh, not quite the cushion I know the coach Phil, likes. Phil Barber turned a little corner there. Uh, I think. Uh, I think Coach Adams right now interested in seeing how his squad reacts to that.
Gonna be a kick for Preston. Head ball nice. stolen away at the last second by Phil Barber's goalie. Brave goalie to jump in there amongst all those feet. To kick oh, it. yeah. The Knights are going to head that ball out of bounds and try to get uh, a little better defensive position on field here while the Colts get set for the throw in. Keep knocking it out. We'll just take turns throwing the ball in. Now the golf with the throw in. Back out again. Work our way up the field. Look, that one may stay in this time. And just as it does, we get a whistle. I think it was a handball. Like the Knights are going to get a corner kick. Yeah, that's what it looks like. No, but uh, I think they're saying that uh, no one touched nope. it but the Knights, so that'll be a goal kick. Okay, we didn't see it that way from this angle, but Philip Barber with an opportunity here to get that ball out of the hole a little bit. And again, the Knights responding well at midfield here. Nice kick out of the field, over the fence. 9.36 left to play, less than 10 minutes in the half. In this half of the final half. Preston Lady Knights will take on Philip Barber uh, following the conclusion of this contest. So stay tuned for that as it's a double header here on the mountaintop tonight. Nine minutes left. Take a little bit of time here on the throw in. Philip Barber really desperately wanting to close the gap now with the ball down on this end of the uh, field uh, because time slowly beginning to become a factor for him and Preston defensively doing a nice job getting that ball out of there. Playing it well over midfield. Mike Adams had a little bit enough of uh, put his uh, starters back on the field, if you will. It was just a two-goal cushion. Not going to take a, a lot of chances here until they can uh, take some clock off the board. Maybe have the opportunity to score again, I think is what we're looking for. I'm sure he'd love to have that three goal margin back. A nice cross into the middle, but it's uh, Stopped by kicked the away by the Knights, and they hustle it downfield quickly. A little bit too much on the cross. We'll go ahead, and that'll be a goal kick for the Colts.
Knights trying to work their magic one more time on the offensive end. We've got a Philip Barber Colt player. Uh, looks like he just got his shoot. feet taken out from underneath of him. Yeah, he, he chewed some turf there for a moment. <laughs> it wasn't intentional, but they did call a foul. So it'll be a free kick for the Colts. and very strong right now at midfield, turning them away. Every time they try to advance that ball, and each time they do that, another 30, 40 seconds off the clock. We're down to the five and a half minute mark in regulation play here. And Preston continues to enjoy a two goal lead at four to two. Preston's doing a pretty good job of keeping it down there on the, on the end of the field that they want it. Be a throw in for Preston. Nice strong throw. Locked up by the goal. He's going to try to send it back down the field. Let's get our defenders and knock it back down. Colts trying to challenge, but the Knights consistently putting that ball back in the other end and forcing them to bring it the length of the field here. Preston's doing a really good job of keeping it out of their goal area. And the Colts goalie is working hard tonight. He is, and he, uh, nice leg. He's uh, getting that ball well out to midfield with each kick, and he's giving him every opportunity he can to, to try and advance that ball into scoring position. They get a little cross here, and the Knights turn it away, take it out of bounds. So Philip Barber, they have to hustle with the throw in here now. Bring it to the middle, and the Knights converge on the ball and take it away again. And send it downfield. Not enough room to get a kick on it there. And we've got another Colt player down in front of the goal there. And I don't think the official has seen it yet. Now they're going to blow the whistle. Stopping the clock at 2 minutes and 43 seconds. Young man in obvious discomfort. Uh, heard someone on the Philip Barber sideline say that he took an elbow. Not sure. We didn't see exactly what happened there. As uh, whatever the event was, it took place behind the play as the ball came back out to midfield. Looks like he got it in the rib there or mm -hmm. something. That's what, they're, that's what they seem to be checking out over there. Yeah, both of these teams will uh, come off to the side. Preston taking the advantage for a water break. Clock stopped with 2.43 remaining in regulation. And the trainers will uh, take some time here assessing the situation. Very easy to get the wind knocked out of you in, uh, in a situation like that. And he uh, definitely flat on his back. And good to see that young man get up now and with a little assistance from... Uh, couple teammates he's going to come to the near side here and 
He's holding his right rib. Looks like he's yeah, going to be a little sore. Probably have a little bit of a difficult time sucking in some wind right now. Yeah. Hey, that's got to hurt. He's, he's in... pretty extreme discomfort right now and so we uh, hope that's nothing serious as he takes a seat and play will resume here momentarily has the ball, they'll kick to the goalie, he will catch it and then kick it back into play. Another nice boot out to uh, midfield here. The nice reverse it well. Philip Barber trying to get back on the attack, sends it down the near side. Just resting midfielders there to take it away. Knight's doing a good job attacking the ball very aggressively on defense here as the clock winds down. And just not allowing Philip Barber to advance into scoring position. Philip Barber is going to get the free kick with minute 52 left to play. They're going to try to set something up here quickly because they've got to go fast now. Trailing four to two. The defense was on the spot, was able to lock the ball out. Yeah, the Knights will send that one well down toward the other end, force the Colts to work it back up. Just a little bit wide of the goal. Nice shot by Kieran, but just a little bit wide of the goal. Forces a little more time off the clock, though, and forces Phil Barber to go the distance now. That's the goal kick now, and we are just under a minute left to play. Here come the Colts. And can't get there in time for the shot. Oh, open goal there for a moment. But again, the Knights do a good job defensively. Scoop that ball away and... Time winding down now as we send it down to the other end. Inside 15 seconds now. Ten seconds Inside to go. 10. Decide where to kick. This may be the very last kick of the night right here. And that is the game. Horn sounds, and the Knights with a very uh, hard fought and well deserved 4 to 2 victory over the uh, Philip Barber Colt varsity men. But uh, both of these teams acquitting themselves very, very well out here tonight, Terrell. A uh, hard fought match and uh, well played on both ends. And the girls are, are stepping up to take over the field. So we'll be back in just a little bit with um, Lady Night action. They'll warm up as the uh, guys celebrate down to our left. And Coach Mike Adams adds another win to the uh, list here on the season. Again, it's a 4-2 win for Preston here. And uh, just the start of the doubleheader tonight as the ladies will take the field next. Coming up on Cable Channel 7 after these messages from our sponsors. Hometown TV, press tonight's soccer action. Coming at you with more right after this. Uh, 
I'm Spencer Lively. I'm a senior at Preston High School, and I play right back. This is my first year playing soccer. I'm really excited to be here. Thank my mom and my dad for supporting me, letting me come out here and play. Uh, my favorite memory so far has been carrying the board, this huge 200-pound board with my teammates, three miles. It was fun. I hope everyone comes out to watch us, and thanks for watching Preston Soccer on Cable 7. Hi, my name's Taylor Jennings. I'm a senior at Preston High School and I play center attacking midfield. First of all, I'd like to thank my parents and coaches for all the hard work that they put into allowing me to play soccer. My favorite moment was last year whenever my cousin and I took a free kick against Grafton and put it into the goal. Uh, I've played soccer for 15 years and played many different positions and my final position for this year will be center attacking midfielder. Hello, my name is Zachary Bryan. I'm a senior at Preston High and I play defense. I played soccer for about 10 years, defense for about four. My favorite memory playing soccer, I actually won the state championship in my U14 league with many members of the soccer team that are with me today. Um, I want to thank my parents and the coaching staff here at Preston High for getting me uh, the opportunities that I have been given. And I promise that this year I will put every single amount of effort that I have into the field. Thank you, this is Preston High Soccer, and this is Channel 7. From a simple switch, troubleshooting a problem, a new service, to that backup generator that you'll need in times of emergency, Blake Electric can handle all your electrical needs. They have the experience and knowledge to do it professionally and safely, and do the job right the first time. There's been an accident. The emergency has left you with physical trauma and legal issues to deal with. The bills are piling up and you're overwhelmed. Where do you turn for legal representation? Hi, I'm Paul Easton. And I'm Steve Schaefer. We're attorneys practicing right here in your home county of Preston. Centrally located on West Main Street in Kingwood, just across from McDonald's, the offices of East Step and Schaefer are an easy drive from anywhere in Preston County. You don't have to go outside Preston County to hire a lawyer with the know-how, the experience, and the knowledge to represent you fairly in a serious personal injury matter. Call us at East Step and Schaefer at 329-6003 or visit us on the web at www.eastepshaferlaw.com What? What do you think you're doing now? I'm going to play soccer. With who? With them. Hi, guys. Buck, you need to put my winter treads on, change my brakes, and change my oil. We have to get to the Preston High soccer game tonight. Rainbow Tire, the tire lady takes care of me. Mill Chapel United Brethren in Christ invites you out to Sunday worship, Children's Church at 8.30 on Sunday morning, Sunday school at 9.45, worship services at 11 a.m. and 6.30 p.m. Mill Chapel has small groups and Bible studies for men, women, and youth. And Mill Chapel is proud to announce they partnered with the Red Cross and is a Preston County Disaster Relief Center, supported by a large generator system that allows the church to be fully functional in times of power outages. Mill Chapel United Brethren on the Kingwood Pike, Reedsville. Something new at Peasley's Service Center. Well, first of all, they've got thousands of new tires, any kind of tire for any kind of car or truck at Peasley's. And a great price on those tires, so make sure you have good, fresh tires to finish the winter. Now, they also have a new alignment machine. It's by Hunter. It is state-of-the-art, and it's big enough to align your crew cab, long bed truck, your dually, your truck up to a 550 size, even oversized tires. Tires are now the best alignment around at Peasley's.
Quality feed from Hubbard and Showright Feed. That's what you'll find at Child's Feed and Supply. But Child's Feed and Supply is more than just feed, lots more. You'll find the tough steel trimmers and chainsaws, DR Power Equipment, Snapper and Snapper Pro Lawn and Garden Equipment, generators by Briggs & Stratton, and, of course, Child's Services, what they sell. Plus, it's time to stock up on wood pellets for the winter. Child's has them. Child's Feed and Supply, more than just feed. Second light either way along Route 7 in Kingwood. Childs. Good luck to the Preston High Knights soccer team. Tyler Davis, mom and dad say go get them. And folks, while you're traveling to and from the soccer games, be sure to stop by Becky's Restaurant, Route 26, south of Kingwood. They're right beside the Heldreth Motel. Let's go Knights from Becky's Restaurant. Hello, this is Aaliyah from Spike's Chimney Sweep. As we are enjoying the heat from the summer sun, we have to remember Old Man Winter will be here knocking on our door soon. Now's the time to start thinking of your heating needs. Here at Spikes, we have you covered with a variety of heating products. We carry wood, coal, pellet, and gas. Give us a call at 304-864-3435 or stop by and get prepared for winter now. We strive to keep you warm inside while old man winter blows outside. Choose the right path for your real estate needs. Locally owned Mountain Path Properties, LLC in Arthurdale. We provide full real estate services to all of North Central West Virginia. Our professional realtors are equipped to provide clients with the highest standard of service in the industry, and we value the opportunity to assist our neighbors and friends in buying, selling, leasing, or managing all types of property. Mountain Path Properties will even represent the buyer at no cost in any transaction no matter which real estate company the property is listed with. So, don't just call a number on a sign. Call Mountain Path Properties and get a professional realtor that will work for you. Oh, and if you're thinking of selling your home, call us for a free market analysis to help determine the value of your property today. Whether your little one has an earache or you simply have a sinus infection, it's urgent that you get the care you need fast. That's why they call them urgent care facilities and not drive 45 minutes to an out-of-area hospital facilities. Fortunately, Preston Memorial Hospital now has an urgent care facility that's open seven days a week, so all Preston residents can get the immediate attention they need and get better as quickly as possible. Preston Memorial Hospital Urgent Care at the Route 7 Kingwood Pike intersection. <laughs> 